Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Da and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome to what is episode 2 of our SC300 exam study guide session and series that we've got going on. I am joined by ever from my co-star, Dwayne Natwick. Hi Dwayne. Hey, hey Shabazz, how are you doing today? I am really good, how are you? I'm doing well. Looking forward to talking about some identity and access. Yes, yes. This is uh, so far. We've had a great time doing this, doing the series. Um, in, in the last episode, just to recap for our viewers, we we looked at the first part of implementing initial configuration for Azure AD. We're going to cover part two, and we shall jump into that shortly. Um, but before that, let's just do a couple of quick for those who are just joining us and, and have not seen the rest of the series. Um, do a quick intro. My name is Shabazz Dan. I mentioned I'm in the IT geek. Uh, I work for Net Company and I've, uh, as a master, main sort of areas of focus are Azure Active uh, Azure AD, um, Azure Virtual Desktop, and sort of identity and security. We work in IT for about fifteen years, cloud I'd say about ten years. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP in Enterprise Mobility and an MCT as well, and I've I've, I've published uh, multiple books, including one on Information Protection Exam, which was the SC400 and also the Azure uh, Virtual Desktop exam, which is the AZ140. And uh, I will now hand over to Dwayne to introduce himself. Yeah, hi, Dwayne Natwick. I am a global principal cloud, uh, cloud security technical lead for Atos, uh, essentially CTO for our cloud security portfolio for global GSI. Um, I am uh, active on socials as a Captain Hyperscaler, uh, as well as uh, uh, as well as I have uh, authored uh, multiple books as uh, Shabazz uh, has, uh, and uh, Shabazz helped me uh, as technical reviewer for my SC three hundred uh, exam guide. I am uh, also a Microsoft MVP and an MCT. I also uh, work uh, as a am a regional lead for the MCT program as well. Uh, been in IT for. Uh, for quite a quite a while, and in uh, wearing multiple hats, and also a uh, been in cloud for you know, about a decade. So, uh, really excited to continue uh, continue this uh, this series and jump right into uh, to uh, the SC three hundred. Exactly. Just just for people who again who who are new to doing, Dwayne literally wrote the book on this. So I'm not sure I could partner with some anyone better to to go through this exam topic. So. Uh, great, great to be collaborating with Dwayne as ever. So, what we're looking at, we're on module one still, uh, which is implementing an identity management solution. Let's quickly uh, break down what we're going to be talking about in this episode. So, as I mentioned, it's part two of the implement initial configuration of Azure AD topic. Today, we're going to talk about configuring delegation by using administrative units, and also we're going to be looking at configuring tenant-wide settings. Okay. And then Dwayne is going to do some some two demos for us this time. First one being configure delegation uh, by using administrative units, so just configuring administrative units essentially. And also we're going to look at configuring tenant-wide settings as well. So a um, couple of good topics there. So we're going to be a bit more demo heavy in, in this episode. So let's jump right into it. What is an administrative unit, first of all? Okay, we need to know this before we start talking about it. We can break this explanation down into three sort of main key features, okay? First, so it's essentially a container that houses different Azure AD resources, okay? So going back to that phrase of least privilege access, an administrative unit, you see, uh, administrative units, the feature it looks at to make this, implementing this much easier. Okay, so by using administrative units, you can make it so specific user administrators can manage a specific group. So you don't have to give them uh, access to manage tenant wide groups. It can be one specific group and you do that for administrative units. Okay. It can only contain users and groups. So that's something to note about administrative units. And you can add multiple admin roles uh, as their multiple admin roles are supported. And this is something we're going to discuss in more detail shortly. So now we know what they are what roles are available. Okay, so let's touch on this for a second. Let's talk about a couple of roles that actually support administrative units, okay? So first we've got authentication administrator. Okay, so users with this role can set or reset any sort of authentication method, you know, including passwords uh, for non-administrators. 
uh, and for some roles, not every role, okay? So it requires a user who um, has an existing non-password credential, for example, MFA or, or FIDO, for example. And it can also revoke uh, and remember MFA on a device. So if you have that setting to allow users to remember MFA, with this role, you can actually remove that. And then that'll prompt uh, people for their MFA or their next sign-in. Next, we have group administrators. Okay, so users with this role can create and manage groups, pretty much in, in the name. Uh, and they can do stuff like, you know, modify settings like the name or any expiration policies. Um, okay, so you can also different type of groups as well. So, you know, you can, you can manage Teams and SharePoint, so the Microsoft 365 groups and stuff like that. Let's move on to another another role now. So a help desk administrator. So users of this role again is more suited to someone who's doing a help desk role, and they can uh, change passwords, uh, invalidate and refresh tokens, create and manage support requests as well. Uh, and what you'll find is it's all around your Azure and Microsoft 365 services. They can also monitor those services like the health. Um, so again, it's all those sort of help desk, sort of first line sort of, uh, sort of roles. Next is the uh, role that's available for administrative units is the licensing administrator. Okay, so again, kind of in the name, users with this role can add, remove, and update licenses and assign them to users and groups uh, using group-based licensing, which we are going to touch on later on in this uh, in this module. We can also manage support tickets as well. That's kind of a a lot of the roles can manage support tickets, so a licensed administrator is one of them. Uh, so second to last, let's talk about password administrator. This is another uh, supported role. And again, users with this role have limited ability to manage passwords. So what it can't do is it doesn't have the ability to manage service requests or monitor service health, okay? Kind of contradicts what's in my last, <laughs> my last sentence, but password administrator is one of the roles that can't manage requests, just passwords. Final role that's available and supports it is a user administrator role. So we've touched on this already a few times uh, in the last module. So this, can, this user administrator can create users, administer them, manage groups, uh, you know, password expiration policies, that sort of stuff, okay? Again, it has all that, you know, being able to manage support to get some monitor to service health as well. So now we know what administrative unit is. We know what roles are available. Let's talk about making sure you have a plan when you know you don't want to just jump into creating administrative units have a bit of a plan so when we talk about planning for administrative units you know we're talking about there's, there's a few different stages your company or your organization can expect to go through okay first of all is the initial adoption so your organization is going to start creating these administrative units based on some criteria or you'd hope and the number of administrative units will increase as the criteria is more defined okay Next, we have housekeeping or, you know, um, keep, keeping it tidy, essentially. So after that criteria is defined, after the initial adoption, administrative units that are no longer required can be deleted. Okay, so if you don't need them, get rid of them. Keep your house clean, essentially. Final sort of planning area, planning point is stabilization. Okay, so you've got that structure, it's been defined. You've, you've done your tidying up, you've done your housekeeping. And now we need to make sure the number of administrative units isn't going to change significantly in a short space of time, okay? So keep it stable. Try and keep the same amount of administrative units. Don't make too many changes in a short period of time, okay? So we now know what they are. We know what roles are available, and we've got a plan in mind. Let's talk about delegating administrative administration in Azure AD. So restricting who can have access and who can create applications and manage those applications by default in azure ad all users can register application registrations and manage all aspects of the application you create i think we'll be seeing potentially seeing some of that in the in the demo later but you can restrict um only specific people to have those permissions so you can restrict that okay let's talk about assigning roles Okay, assign one or more owner to an application. Don't have one owner because, you know, it's a single point of failure really, isn't it? Simple way, grant someone the ability to manage all aspects of the Azure AD configuration for a specific application. Let's talk about assigning built-in administrative roles. Okay, so these grant access to manage configuration in Azure AD for all applications. The recommended way 
to grant IT admins to manage broad application configuration permissions without granting access to manage other aspects of Azure. So again, it's that role-based access control that Dwayne mentioned earlier. As we mentioned as well, you can create custom roles. So you don't, you know, you can define specific elements of your role from one other role and, you know, from a different role. So you can combine two roles into one and create a custom role. And you can set these to, to have, you know, directory scope if you want, all applications, or as a limited administrator. So finally, I want to touch on establishing emergency accounts. Attackers who get control of privilege accounts can do tremendous damage, as I'm sure I've experienced in my time doing, and I'm sure you have. It's always good to protect those accounts first, okay? Um, you know, make sure you, you, you make sure those admin accounts have MFA, make sure you have a break glass account. I think it's not, you know, normally in the industry it's called a break glass account. Um, so make sure they, they are all protected. Okay, and making sure admin roles are secure. As we mentioned, attacks can be very, very, very bad for, for organizations. So making sure that you establish emergency accounts that, you know, are kind of, you need to do like a break glass for or making sure your roles are secure as well is very, very important. Now let's move on to talk about the second topic in this uh, module, which is going to be configure tenant-wide settings. First little bit I want to touch on is tenant-wide options, okay? So there's three tenant-wide options that I want to really discuss. First is tenant properties, which can be located in Azure AD and property section. So again, I'm sure this is something Dwayne will touch on in, in his demo shortly. This is where you can configure values and settings, for example, like the technical contact. So for my IMIT, IMIT Geek uh, tenant, I would be that technical contact, okay? Then we have uh, the user settings. And again, these can be located in Azure AD, user, user settings. And this is something else I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure we're going to see in the demo, so I won't go too much into it. But here we can configure sort of access rights you have, like being able to access the admin portal or not. Finally, we have external settings. So, fire, you know, this is where, again, you can find this in Azure AD. I think it's user settings and manage external collaboration. Here you can define, basically, your guest access, your guest users, what they can and cannot do when it comes to inviting other guests into your tenancy. Okay. So, let's look at the different users we have available, different user types. So essentially there are two sort of user types we have within Azure AD. We have member users. So these are users who are created in Azure AD or synchronized from Active Directory on-premises. They are your own internal users, okay? Your corporate users, part of your company. Uh, they can register applications, manage their own profile photo, you know, their mobile number, all that sort of stuff. And they can also invite guests into your tenancy. And then we have those guests, okay? So these are always users that are external to your company and they are members, they are, they are normally people who are members of a different tenant, okay? So they're not members of your tenant, but a different tenant, they're guests in your tenant, okay? And they can manage their own profile, change their own password, all stuff like that. However, what they can't do is read directory information, okay? So that's the main difference. So quick little bit around federating with LinkedIn. So you can federate your tenancy with different third-party vendors, one of those being, for example, LinkedIn. Why, why would you do this? So this allows users to sign in with their LinkedIn without having to create a new account. Um, this will in turn advise, you know, it'll reduce cost and like, so if you're administrative overhead, the amount of time your admins are spending on, on implementing a different sign-in and identity management um, sort of configuration. And they can also personalize, it allows tenants to put our customers and clients to personalize their site and applications and they can show like the latest members and their profiles. It's a lot of cool stuff you can do with federating with LinkedIn. So let's finally touch on uh, managing security defaults, okay? So with so many different methods of attacks like password sprays, replay attacks, phishing attacks, and I'm sure Dwayne can testify that it's very difficult to manage security. Security defaults make that easy and they help you protect your organization from these sort of attacks, okay? I'll do this in many different ways. Requiring MFA, we've mentioned MFA a few times. Blocking legacy authentication like um, POP3 and, and um, IMAP, for example. You know, blocking those is very important. 
and also pre pre protecting privileged activities like access to the Azure portal. Don't give everyone access to do that. Um, you know, we're going to talk about PIM later on, so use stuff like PIM to, to help protect against that. So, again, I'm tired of talking. Over to you, Dwayne. <laughs> All right. So let's jump back into uh, Azure Active Directory and our portal here, and let's talk about uh, a couple of these areas here. Uh, administrative units we'll, we'll start with, and you can see we can get to all of those areas. You know, if we go to our, our Azure Active Directory uh, dashboard here, uh, we have all those areas uh, that we just discussed, uh, that uh, Shabazz just discussed there. Administrative units are in here. Uh, we have our properties and user settings, which we'll go into here in a minute as well. But let's start with the administrator, the administrative units and how we how we create that administrative unit. So we create an administrative unit. Let's say we're, you know, we're creating it uh, for help desk. For the help desk team and we'll go next to assigned roles. And you can see here, here are a good group of roles here. Uh, there's actually a few additional roles that uh, that we didn't uh, that Shabazz didn't hit on like printer administrator and SharePoint administrator that you can uh, put teams administrator in here as well um, but you can see we can uh, you know if we want um, you know just say okay help desk administrator uh, and let's uh, just uh, put this user in here uh, we can you know add multiple users uh, within this group so essentially what we're doing is we're creating a we're creating a group and we're uh, and we're assigning that group uh, particular roles and we're assigning people particularly in here uh, with the with those roles so uh, let me go down here and you know assign a couple of additional users here uh, with the user administrator so we're you know we're creating we're creating a team, so to speak, that's going to handle our identity and access management and, uh, you know, and our users within our environment, but also creating a separation of duties in here because we're, you know, we've got different people in here. So we're creating, you know, that administrative unit, you know, if, um, you know, we, we talk about this uh, in, um, in kind of managed service provider speak of creating a pod and creating that support pod uh, for our users. And then we can, you know, just create that and you can see we've got different administrators and different administrator assignments and uh, and we can select create there and then we have our have our team for our for our user environment for uh, for those roles and again created that separation of duties there so so we're not assigning everybody that role but we can go in here and uh, and can then review uh, who you know what the properties are and who the roles and administrators are uh, within this uh, within this environment as well um, still hasn't still populating here in the uh, in the um, in the group uh, so you know very helpful there though so like, like I said to create those those pods so to speak to uh, to uh, to support our user environment and keep those separation of duty so we're not going in and setting up one user and giving them you know full admin rights uh, within there as well. Um, something that, uh, that Shabazz mentioned uh, that, uh, that I wanted to point out as well, as we look at our users, uh, you can see I have an emergency admin here. Uh, I've created a break glass account. So some key things around the break, break, break glass account to understand is, uh, is they should, um, uh, and I don't have anything uh, anything assigned to them, but they're generally going to be a global administrator that is not uh, not governed by multi-factor authentication. We're and they have we need to make sure we have a very strong password that's in in kind of our incident response uh, port uh, you know binder uh, and and locked up tight uh, where wherever it is, whether it's kept in a you know a secure key vault or whatever that only a couple people have access to uh, we need to make sure those accounts are taken uh, are taken very seriously and are protected uh, and those passwords are the uh, are 
not not a guessable password because we don't want them in, it, they're really when we get compromised and maybe have a problem with our multi-factor authentication or our conditional access policies we need somebody we need a account that might uh that can circumvent all of that and hopefully uh hopefully get us out of uh, get us out of trouble is really why that's an emergency account and exactly why it's called an emergency account uh, just like uh, and break glass account if anybody's seen you know fire extinguishers in a business where you know in, in case of emergency break glass uh, you know you're not going to grab that uh, that fire extinguisher unless there's a fire and that's exactly the same thing uh, we should use with those emergency accounts Last thing to kind of touch on is the uh, is those tenant wide settings and you can see you know in the tenant properties we have our, our different properties in here uh, you know we have the technical contact uh, I'm not using my uh, my captain hyperscaler domain I have uh, separation of duties there and use my personal account um, we have here uh, was mentioned the uh, the security defaults um, we'll talk about this. Uh, in uh, in module two, when we start talking about conditional access policies and everything, security defaults are enabled by default when you create your tenant, and it gets you a good uh, a good initial start to protecting uh, protecting your identity and access uh, environment uh, by putting those and enforcing certain things like MFA on. Uh, on administrator accounts and uh, and like Shabazz said, you know, le you know, no legacy authentication and those type of things. Mine's off because uh, I've I've evolved from that point and uh, and use condition and demo and use conditional access policies. So uh, when you start to do those advanced features, uh, you're going to have to turn the security defaults off because now you're now you're past that that learning phase within setting up your tenant and uh, and you uh, and you're and you're no longer using those. Uh, but if you select the learn more, it'll take you out to Microsoft Docs and, and tell you the five bullets around security defaults. I recommend going out there and just understanding what what those what those are uh, when you're uh, preparing for the exam. Uh, next piece is that uh, in the tenant wide settings is the user uh, the user settings. And here again, you know. Do we want our users to uh, to do app registrations? Do we want to allow them to uh, launch and view, uh, you know, enterprise and manage their enterprise applications? We can configure all of that here. Uh, we can restrict levels of access to uh, the uh, the Azure AD admin portal. Here's the here's the LinkedIn allowing users to connect your your accounts together and share. That LinkedIn data and uh, and something else that doing this does is is kind of neat is is in your Outlook profile when you hover over a user if the LinkedIn account is connected uh, like it's like uh, Shabazz said it'll show where you know it'll give you access to LinkedIn profile or show uh, show uh, your connections and uh, and uh, connections that you have in common and things like that. Um, the uh, external collaboration settings again these are for those external users which we'll talk a little bit more about i think in the next uh next couple of videos uh but what guest users can do the, you know um we can we can make this as restrictive or as open as possible uh it kind of defaults to uh most inclusive in, in invitation settings it uh user access is a little bit in the middle uh in how uh and how this is you know, allowing invitations. I don't have this set too restrictive just because this is a de uh, generally a tenant that I use for personal reasons and for demos. So, uh, but you can, you know, if you're an enterprise, you might want to keep these restricted. Uh, you might want, you know, maybe you want to keep it in the middle. It's up to you. It's up to you. And, uh, and these are all ways to, uh, to set those settings up. Uh, we got user feature settings here as well uh, for, uh, for apps and groups uh, and uh, and other and other settings here as well and you can see um, see some things are changing within uh, within here for uh, multi-factor authentication and uh, and uh, self-service password reset that are starting to become become a combined experience uh, and when we talk about those particular pieces you'll see why uh, why that is so that uh, I think is about everything for uh, for kind of those tenant-wide 
uh, tenant wide settings and uh, and administrative units that we wanted to cover here in this uh, module. Right, Shabazz? Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for that, Dwayne. Another cracking two labs there again. Um, so yeah, that, that that covers episode episode two, and you know that that's the sort of um, uh, the implementing the Azure Active Directory that we wanted to cover. That's the two parts that covers that area. Um, we are going to be moving on to episode three. We're going to be talking about creating, configuring, and managing identities. So that's going to be in episode three. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but again, thank you, Dwayne. Been again having so much fun doing this doing this whole course with you. It's 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 been you know we're having good fun doing it. So thank you again for your time. Yep. Thanks, Shabazz. And yeah, the demos as we get a little bit deeper into the security features and everything like that will be a little bit more, less of a walkthrough and more yeah. of a hands-on you know, area of, hey, what can I do here and yeah. and what do we implement? Yeah, we were at the start of the module. Like, we were very much trying to cover the theory at the moment. We're going to get into the good stuff, uh, obviously, the further on we go. Um, please don't forget to to um, subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with what's going on and to keep up to date with the episodes. Subscribe to Dwayne's channel as well. It will be in the description. Uh, give us a like, comment, reach out to us. and always happy to hear feedback. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. And up until next time, thank you and goodbye.